Drexel Dragons getting their final instructions before they go to battle against the Hofstra Pride. Starting lineups brought to you as always by the region's strongest network of doctors and hospitals, Independence Blue Cross. That means you can choose where, when, and how you get the care you need. Independence Blue Cross. Learn more at ibx.com. Tubes. Starting lineups first for your Drexel Dragons. We'll start with the Dragons. It's going to be the same five that we've had the last few games. So it's going to be Luke House, Monte Okrus, Justin Moore at the point, up front, Lucas Monroe and Amari Williams. For Hofstra, dynamic duo. Tom, we already talked about Tyler Thomas, but D Stone Dubar having almost as good a year. He's averaging 18 points a game, and he's been he's been outstanding as well. Jaquan Carlos is at the point. Yako Fritz and German Plotnikov. That's the starters for Hofstra. Big game here for the Dragons and the Pride. Everybody's tied up for third place. Yeah, these two in Towson at eight and four in the league right now. Delaware. Delaware. Yeah. And, and then you all. have, um, you know, UNCW and College of Charleston at nine and three at the top. Yep, just one game ahead of everybody, but it's going to be a fun couple weeks. A little chaos is good for the soul every once in a while. It's the heart ticking a little quicker, too. And Fritz and Amari Williams getting ready to jump center. Get this one underway. And it'll be Hofstra basketball to start this one off. Drexel and Hofstra, two 15 and 10 teams. Meeting up here at the DAC on a Thursday night in the CAA. Jaquan's pass deflected. Tyler Thomas there. Thomas can shoot from anywhere. He doesn't need a whole lot of space. Fritz working against Amari. Somehow gets that to fall. Yeah. Get it a little higher in the air there. Get over the outstretched arm of Amari Williams. Third fake works for him. Hofstra with the early lead. The Dragons have had a couple slow starts this year. They've overcome them earlier in the season. Haven't been able to overcome them as of late. Lucas Monroe driving. Gets it tipped. Amari rebounds. Has it pulled away from him by D. Stone Dubar. Pride love to shoot the three. They're a top three-point shooting team in the league. And they also lead the league in number of three-pointers made. Quan going left. Goes it up to the top. Dubar, seven on the shot clock. Four, Thomas, fade away. Woo! That's tough. That's yeah, a that's tough shot right there. Said he can do a little everything. Monroe trying to answer too strong. Yeah, that was kind of a rush shot. I don't think that's the shot the Dragons really wanted right there. Kind of. Ooh. That block is called on Okrus. A lot of contact right there. I thought Okrus tried to pick up the charge. Didn't work. First foul of the game. Coach Spiker. Keeping his cool. They're level-headed despite the team's recent woes. And it's, it's strange too, Rob. Like the woes aren't awful, right? It, it doesn't feel great. Thomas misses from three. It doesn't feel great, but you just lost to the two best teams in the league on the road in front of sellouts. So, Dragons still have the business in front of them. There's a whistle down low. Yeah, they're gonna, it's not gonna be an Amari one. This is actually gonna be on Plotnikov. It's a Yako Fritz. They call that our Fritz. Yeah. Transfer from Canisius. Yeah. That was him. Amari gets it up. House thought about driving it. Now Justin in the paint. Travel. Carlos all over him. Yeah, he forces the travel. Yeah, he moved that left foot. Not the start the Dragons wanted. One of the things, Rob, that we've seen in the last couple games that didn't happen early in the year. The Dragons have gone cold in stretches. Had a great start against Charleston, but they got cold. A little while in the Wilmington game as well, there was a really big lull. I think they need to try to avoid that against the Pride right now, but so far it's two plus with no points. Fritz, the handoff to Thomas. D Stone from three. Seven nothing, Hofstra. Well, we said they like to shoot the three. Nice little move by Monroe there. Get across the front of the basket. 
Let's get the Dragons first points. Calvin Hicks in the stands today. You can hear him. He is all over it right now. Fritz, nice slip, good pass. 9 to the count. Foul on the floor. Looks like that's going to go against Plotnikov. Now Kobe McGee will check in for Drexel. Lucas Monroe will go to the sidelines. Lucas Monroe really been a, a spark plug since he got in the starting lineup. He was great coming off the bench, but he's even been better as a starter. Yeah, he definitely brings some energy, no doubt about that. To the corner, Okruz for three, it's good. There we go. Let's get it started. Nine, five to count. Plotnikov from the top. Wow. wow. If he exactly. hits that, that's tough. They have so many weapons, you don't want their third and fourth options to get going. Okruz again, too strong. And House knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Hofstra basketball. Dragons just two of five in the early going. On the other end, Hofstra's missed just one shot so far. The good news is they're only 37% three-point shooters as a team. So at some point, you know, there'll be a chilling effect, you hope. But they lead the league. <laughs> <laughs> Plotnikov, Thomas. Fade away. Banks at home. That ain't right. Oh. Nine-point deficit early. Williams driving it hard and dumps. Whoa. Overplayed him, and Amari goes right by him. He has so many opportunities to do that in the game. And as soon as he realizes that's available to him, they can open up all kinds of things. But there was also no help there, so he, he was able to get by. Jake Kwan with a drive and the spin. You know, the Dragons in, in a funk against this, this Hofstra Pride team. They've lost the last four in a row in 11 of 12. You know, I remember when the series was basically, you know, everybody wins on their home floor. Carlos for the steal. Let's see if they have a break in him. Kick it out to the wing. Farmer for three. It's good. Spiker Khalil Farmer call a timeout from here. Roman Catholic High School. And he does. Wow, what a blitz right away. Hofstra starts off 8 of 9 from the floor. 3 of 4 from deep in 19-7. Well, we will take a timeout. The Dragons regroup. They're down 12 early to the pride. This is Drexel Basketball from Learfield Sports. I think being part of the team, behind the team, knowing that there's multiple individuals that are all really focused on the same goal of keeping athletes healthy, really does make an impact in their lives. My goal is always the same, meet the athlete where they are, help them be their best selves, but also minimize their risk. When I think of the team behind the team, I really kind of consider an army in the background, right? Uh, we're kind of an unseen group of people that the end result is really the athletes on the field, on the court, performing. At Independence Blue Cross, we take care of the people who take care of you like these everyday heroes who trust IBX with their health coverage. Healthcare workers and hospitals have IBX and they know what it means to have reliable access to care. We're the number one health insurer in the region and invested in what matters to our communities. When it comes to protecting your health and well-being, count on IBX to be there for you. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Woo, parking is free! Hey, 
Hey, it's free. With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead. Freak out. <laughs> The madness of March comes to our nation's capital as the 2024 Jersey Mike CAA Men's Basketball Championship is back at the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C., March 8th through the 12th. Get ready for big shots, end-to-end -end action, and exciting finishes as 14 teams battle for a berth to the NCAA tournament. Get your tickets now at caasports.com slash MVB to see which CAA team will be crowned in the capital. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW Local 98, is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the 23-24 Drexel Men's Basketball Season. IBEW 98, powering the Dragons and Philadelphia. Ben Franklin Parkway in Philadelphia as we take a look at Amari Williams driving hard to the basket. Yeah, see, there was no help whatsoever, so Amari went right by Plotnikov. Now 999 points with that dunk. Sitting right on the edge of a thousand. But more important than that, the Dragons down 12 though. They gotta get right back in here. At some point you think Hofstra's gonna miss a shot and they, they're eight of nine early. Yame Butler in the game now for Drexel, along with Jamie Bergens. It's Bergens with a rock right now. Yame on the wing. Kicks it across McGee, open, shoots. Good for three. Took a long time to come down. It hung up there a little bit. Kobe yeah. getting the scoring column. Time to admire it. Dragons down nine. Jaquan kicks it back to D Stone. He wants to drive it. Loses Amari. Misses the shot though. He had Amari on skates. It was an easy basket and he panicked. McGee gets into the paint, jumper, no. Rebounded by Carlos. Yame does a good job cutting Tyler Thomas off there. Okay. Tough guard right here. Actually, Yami did a pretty good job there, forced him to go outside. Forced him to go outside. Unfortunately, he's hit that shot a couple times. That looks like it's his shot, but got a miss there. Amari, left hand, no. No foul. They let, them, let them bump each other pretty good out there. Turnover for the Hofstra Pride. McGee. Yame calls for it. They threw it down to the big guy. Amari doubled. He's got to get rid of it. Goes baseline reverse, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Pretty good trap by Hofstra right there, but looks like Carlos got caught with the reach. See if they give him two shots or if it was on the floor. Dragons only faced the pride once last year. That game was on the road up in Hempstead, Long Island. So we haven't Hofstra in here in a while. Yeah. Amari you... didn't have a great game there. 13 points. It was 5 of 10 from the free throw line and 4 of 11 from the floor. So Amari Williams, 62.2% free throw shooter at the line, shooting two. First one is good. And that is 1,000th point for Amari. Shane Blakeney in the game, Amari. Congratulations. I'm sure right now that's the last thing on his mind. Samari two for two on the trip. Brings the Dragons to within seven. So Amari Williams goes sit down. And Garfield Turner will check in. Garfield played some big minutes for Drexel this year. Defense, rebounding, occasionally scoring punch, you name it. He brings it. Yep, he brings some good energy. Dubar. 
Right there, pretty good defense, making Dubar work for that shot. All tangled up inside. Yeah, they don't have that spacing over there. Yame with a difficult drive, and it's going to be a foul on the floor. Okay. We had Plotnikov. It's two on Plotnikov. I think they're going to call that one on the floor. It looked like it was a push after. Yeah, they're going to take this on the baseline. Coach Spiker, always full of positive energy. McGee gets it in the corner to Blakeney. Now Bergens. Nine on the shot clock. Yame in the lane, just short. Had the rebound knocked out of his hands. And now ahead to Carlos. Jaquan driving, goes through. And Farmer turns it over. Yeah, unforced turnover. Dragons will take that. Dragons down seven after being in a pretty big hole early. Hofstra picking up full court here. It's just token pressure. We're under 12 minutes to go. Hofstra slowed down now, but they're still up seven. Bergen's looking for a way in. Kicks it across the court. McGee wide open for three. It is good. Nice find. That's really good look by Jamie Bergen's. And all of a sudden, the Dragons right back in this on an 8 0 run. 8 0 run propelled by the bench. As hot as Hofstra was, they've now gone over three and a half without scoring. And it really changed when McGee and Bergen's and Butler came in the ballgame. Thomas being guarded by Blakeney. The length on Blakeney helps with the covers. Thomas, tough shot again. Jamie from the top of the key. It falls. The friendly Dak roll. All those hours paying off right there. The familiarity. Thomas lets it fly. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, you got to go over the top on him right there. And Dragon's just a little late. And Thomas is starting to heat up all of a sudden. He's got nine. When the game last year was limited to just 11 points versus the Dragons. Coach wow. Claxton, obviously, not enamored with the call. Yeah, I'm, he, he, that's pretty close to a technical, the way he was uh, so demonstrative right in front of the referees. But Kobe McGee with a couple threes here in the early going. Drexel still trailing by seven. This is Drexel basketball from Learfield Sports.
you'll find affordable family fun in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Plan your trip at valleyforge.org. Welcome back to the DAC here in Philadelphia. And with the free throw, just a few moments ago, Amari Williams became the 40th Dragon in program history to score 1,000 points. Right in front of him, another pretty good big man in Robert Battle. But you take a look at Amari Williams and his career accomplishments. Top 20 in program history and rebounds. Top 5 in blocks and now top 40 in scoring and a 1,000 point scorer. Rob? And on top of that, just a great kid. Big smile. You know, he was a, he's from across the pond, as they like to say. A soccer player in high school, or football, as they say over there. But, uh, yeah, it's what a great addition to this team. Really good kid. Get to know these guys on the road. And it's, uh, this is a really fun bunch of... I, I don't know if I've ever seen a team that laughs and smiles more than this group does. Justin back in the game. The more pass over to Turner. Now Yame Butler. Yame tries to drop it off for Garfield Turner. It's going to go out of bounds off GT. Hmm. Yame got in the lane. I don't think Turner was ready for that one. Usually when he gets that far in, he goes up. He goes up, yeah. But he did see a little hole there. But Turner gives the ball back to the pride. Fritz, the handoff to Thomas. Good help there. Oh, yeah, real he good help. Went up and down there. And a foul from behind, and Bryce Washington is just going to the basket. Yeah, Justin Moore got the ball, but he, he got beat baseline and bumped in him right there, so we've got two shots coming. Bryce started at Penn, graduated from the University of Pennsylvania, just up the street. 62.5% free throw shooter, knocks down the first. The Jersey Mike CA Men's Basketball Championship is coming up March 8th through the 12th at the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C. Please come out and support your Dragons. Make it a difficult W for anybody trying to beat the, De the Drexel Dragons down there. Tickets on sale now at casports.com backslash MBB. Both and the next week, the women will be there. Yeah, right after. So if things go right, we can stay. There you go. Any excuse to spend some extra days in D.C.? Luke thought about taking it to the house. Oh, Bergens. Justin shovels it over. Bergens from three. Balls. Nice ball movement. Bergen's been shooting the ball a little better from three lately. He's got five points today. Lead at six for Hofstra. The Dragons have made three of their last three. Hofstra still shooting 71%. That was a lot of work for Thomas right there. If that shot had fallen. Uh. But that's what you want to make him work, right? He's going to get his points. I mean, he, he gets them every night. Thirteen on the shot clock. Good job Look. by Justin Moore to hang on to that. A little collision there. Six on the shot clock. Justin from the logo. Offensive foul. Then I think they're going to call an offensive foul on Turner, right? Yes. Yeah. He was trying to get position down low. Hofstra bench has been calling for that last couple possessions. Been really physical down there. It's five turnovers are ready for the Dragons. Unfortunately, that's kind of typical the last couple of weeks in the first half. You know, they usually do a better job protecting the ball in the second half, but talked about slow starts earlier. Fritz okay. takes the shot and he's going to get a chance for one more. Yep, so Turner will pick up his second foul and it's going to be an and one when we come back. So it's 7.51 remaining here in the first half. Chance for a three-point play coming up. Jaco Fritz will go to the line. 
will step aside. This is Drexel Basketball from Learfield Sports on NBC Sports Plus. At Independence Blue Cross, we know where you come from is a part of who you are. That's why we get to know our members and their communities, which are also our communities. For more than 85 years, we've lived here, volunteered here, and earned our spot as the number one health insurer in the region. We're your hometown partner for life, and we'll never stop looking out for you. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Parking is free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> in the world of athletes, where every move counts, setbacks can feel like a mountain to climb. At Rothman Orthopedics, our team of top-notch orthopedic experts are here to get you back to doing what you love, because we specialize in you. We're not just about recovery, we're about rewriting your story. With specialized physicians and unwavering support, we help you rise above adversity. Rothman Orthopedics, the official orthopedic provider of athletes. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships. Orthopedics, the official team physicians of your Dragons. Welcome back to the deck as we come to the free throw line. Yako Fritz will be at the line to try and complete a three-point play. Fritz a 51.2% free throw shooter. He's got six points today already on three of three shooting. Yeah, that's one of the things we talked a little about earlier. You know. Misses. You know the, the two superstars are going to get theirs for Hofstra. Just got to try to contain the rest of them, which has not been easy so far. Moore, Blakeney, House, Williams, and Bergen's on the floor for Drexel right now. Did a good job of take, keeping House Away from any open threes. Moore got cut off. Three on the shot clock. Rims out. Amari does a good job yeah. closing out on Thomas there. Yeah, good help defense there by Drexel. A little mismatch here size-wise. Let's see if Jamie can stay with him. Ooh, John Robinson lets it fly from way, way downtown. Lead back up to double digits as that's the fifth three-pointer of the half. Five of six from beyond the arc today. Bergen shot blocked by Fritz. Now Fritz wants to run the break. He finds Bryce Washington for the jam. 7-0 run now. Dragons all of a sudden one of their droughts having a bucket for almost three minutes. Yame and Kobe at the table to check in in the next stop at your play. His coach tries to find the right formula here. Blakeney slips. He's able to recover the ball. Wow, Bergen's just before the buzzer expires. The Dragons very fortunate right there. Yeah, Hofstra makes a really nice play to Try to save the ball, but he just saved it right to Bergens, who laid it up and in. 
Dragons needed that desperately. But clearly the, the Hofstra pride not scared of a little floor burn here and there. Wide Thomas open. wide open, takes a dribble. Wow, the Dragons are really fortunate there. I think Thomas was kind of, what, nobody's here? <laughs> you know who I am? They lob it down to Williams. Finds House cutting through the lane. Finger roll is good. Yeah, much better offense that time for the Dragons there. Getting the House involved, getting Amari Williams. I mean, you know, especially in the early part of the season, the Drexel's, Drexel's offense went down to the post, and then he kicked it out, and they let it fly. Okay. Offensive foul there from Yako Fritz. So now Fritz has two. So we got Fritz, Carlos, and Plotnikov each with two. On Drexel's side, just Turner. Good few minutes by Jamie Bergens right there. Seven points and an assist. Bergens will go rest up a little bit. And Yame Butler will bring it to the offensive end, drops it off for Moore. Justin, the house from the corner, yes! Luke House, be great to see him get hot. Yeah, five points in a row there, lead down to six. It's been a game of runs. It seems like there's been a bunch of 7-0 runs each way. Thomas trying to go one-on-one -on -one here. And determined to score he was. And he did. Thomas in double figures. Justin finds Amari. A little bit too much there. Yeah, he got what they wanted. They had a short jumper, just a little too, a little too hard off the backboard there. Pride still at 70% with just under four minutes to go in the half. I'm gonna go up a little more there. When you're able to shoot shots like that, like step backs, step back fadeaways all the time. Thomas, 13 points now, six of 10. And he went for 40 earlier this year versus High Point. Justin from the elbow. That's his shot normally. Yeah, that, but he did fade away a little there. You know, it's pretty good defense. When he can go straight up, he's usually pretty good with that. Thomas, once again, committed to going. Thomas, six straight points. Dragons have not found an answer for him yet. Cat might want to go get a chef's coat because he's cooking some folks right now. And Drexel takes the time out here as Hofstra has extended the lead to 12. It's a game of runs so far, but Tyler Thomas got his foot on the throttle. Getting down. This is Drexel basketball from Learfield Sports. At Independence Blue Cross, we take...
This season, when the Dragons score, you score. Each home game with 70 or more points means Drexel fans get a free Shack Burger the day after the game with proof of ticket and minimum $1 purchase. Strategic Wealth Designers, the preferred retirement planning sponsor of your Drexel Dragons. Half for the Drexel Dragons. As we come back to action here, the Hofstra Pride shooting 72.7% from the floor and 71.4% from three. And they're up 12 here, 39-27. Such a high number this late in the half. Yame trying to find daylight. And he does. No easy shots allowed for Yame Butler. No, we don't want him to take them. We like the tough ones. So good at those. Tyler Thomas gets the foul. So Thomas did something wrong this half. And done a whole lot of other things wrong, Rob. He can score. What a half he's had. Yame misses the free throw. Coming up at halftime, Drexel basketball A to Z. Coach Spiker and Coach Mallon. If you haven't seen that series, it's done really well. It's really interesting, a fun watch. I think today they're going to talk about recruiting. Okay, today they're going to just talk about some good moments. Some um, new rules, rule changes. Mm -hmm. John Robinson got stuck in the air there. Wow, I thought that was going in too. I was like. That would have been a terrible moment if that went yeah, down. That was a really tough shot. And Amari Williams with a chance for the end one. Amari went right to the basket quick that time. Beat the defense. I believe the help followed him there in Washington. And the fouls on Bryce Washington. The eighth team foul on the Pride. Mario already two for two at the line today. Rocking some new kicks. If that shot had not gone down, there would have been a lane violation. And he got to take it again. So Mario with seven points, four boards, as you can see right there. Good half for the big guy. Thomas finds D Stone. His path to the basket was too easy. Fortunately for the Dragons, he misses the shot. Now McGee on the break. Ooh, tough pass. Good um, catch. Almost went wild. Amari stops, pops. Won't fall for him. Coming up on one minute remaining in the half. Drexel's got it to single digits. Got to keep it that way, though. Pride already knocked down five threes this half. Thomas. Make it six. Beast today. So he's got 18 points in the first half on 8 of 12 shooting, including 2 of 4 from deep. He's also got 5 rebounds and 4 assists. What a half. We knew he was good. You know, we've been hearing about him, we've been seeing him, but seeing him live, it doesn't look like he's, it's, it looks effortless too. Yeah, he doesn't work, it doesn't look like he's working that hard all the time. Bergens tries to take it down the left side of the lane, back up top for a house. He'll let it fly. It's short. Amari runs it down. Eight seconds left in the half. House drops it off for McGee. Blocked. And out of bounds. They say it's off of the Hofstra Pride. So Drexel with three and six, ten seconds remaining will have a chance to inbound it and have the last word here in the first half. Dragons bringing in Okus, another three-point shooter. Bergen's out. Okus in. House whips it to the corner. It's blocked. And that is how the half will end. So the Dragons are down 10 at the half tubes. And it was not. 
There were a bunch of runs, so it looked, it probably looks and feels worse than it actually was. Because Hofstra would get it out to double digits, the Dragons would get it back down to seven, six, then they'd stretch it out again. So Jason had the scout today, and Ari Bluestein is with Coach Jason. Uh, Coach, Tyler Thomas has been really tough today. He's hitting open shots. He's hitting contested shots. What do you guys got to do to slow him down in the second half? Yeah, he's a good player. The key is we can't hope he misses. We got to go out there and instigate and kind of like make it a little tougher. We got behind a little bit on our mismatches there and our switches. Uh, but we got to we got to have offer more resistance when he starts backing us down. Now offensively, you are getting a lift off the bench from Jamie Bergens, Kobe McGee. How big was that to keep you guys in the game in that first half? Yeah, that, that was one of our keys before the game. Well, I mean, our bench is big. We, we, we're we deeper. Uh, we just got to keep going at and uh, we hope to wear them down a little bit. Just just play. We got to get more. We just can't play one-on-one -on -one just because we're behind. We got to kind of like move the ball a little bit more. Sounds good, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Rob. Oh, Jason Allison. Talking about what the Dragons need to do a little bit more of in the second half. We'll continue that conversation. Coming up, it's Drexel Basketball A to Z. Enjoy the show. We'll be back in a little bit. This is Drexel Basketball from Learfield Sports. At Independence Blue Cross, we take care of the people who take care of you. Like these everyday heroes who trust IBX with their health coverage. Healthcare workers and hospitals have IBX, and they know what it means to have reliable access to care. We're the number one health insurer in the region and invested in what matters to our communities. When it comes to protecting your health and well-being, count on IBX to be there for you. I think being part of the team, behind the team, knowing that there's multiple individuals that are all really focused on the same goal of keeping athletes healthy really does make an impact in their lives. My goal is always the same meet the athlete where they are, help them be their best selves, but also minimize their risk. When I think of the team behind the team, I really kind of consider an army in the background, right? Uh, we're kind of an unseen group of people that the end result is really the athletes on the field, on the court, performing. We do it better. Save this week on our brand T-Bone Steak, $6.99 per pound. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you got to get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Woo, it's free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> One, two, three. What are those proud moments um, that you've enjoyed? You know, obviously there's on the court, off the court. I'd say on the court, um, you know, we're sitting exactly where we won a WNIT championship in 2013. A historical moment for the program to finish your season with a win at home on your home court with a sold out crowd um, in the city of Philadelphia where no other team has done that. Um, it's, it's to me, that's like a piece that I'm just really proud of and that team um, really, you know, was special. And I think for me, I think about that. And when that group, we, we celebrate their 10 year anniversary this year. Um, that I'd say is one of my favorite basketball moments on this court, you know, being on this court. And I'd say off the court, it's really some of our tours, our, our foreign tours we've gone on, which that is one of the things. And actually, it's funny when we ask our returning alums, what are some of their favorite moments? And they always say winning a championship, their inter international experience that they had, and then yeah. the the teammates, um, you know, the people they, they were with. We had a team in 2022, one of the best teams ever played here, um, went 28-4 on the season, lost in the championship game. But I, the one thing I could say every day about the team, they never disappointed me. I sh they showed up 
every day. Yeah. Um, just they were disappointed, you know, not to win. We went to postseason, but um, that to me was a championship team. We won a regular season title, but just the way they were as people and how they carried themselves. So I'd say really those three things are the things I think about. How about you? I, I look at it, I think, as I've gotten a little bit more seasoned in order. First off, I've only had two foreign trips to Drexel. <laughs> so um, when you decide to attend Drexel and be a part of either one of our programs, knowing that that opportunity to take a foreign trip and travel and what that can do for someone and then have a player go on and play professionally in that country, I, I think it's just awesome. Um, I love that. Um, certainly championships um, and, and key games that lead to championships also are memories that you have um, as an assistant or a head coach. Uh, I, I go off the floor, I've had the chance to be invited to and attend I think eight weddings of our former players. When you see guys um, choose who they want to be around on their special day, one you get to be included in that and two it's all the other guys you recruit in the process. I just, I love those days. Um, but also, Matej Juric played here because of his time commitment, wasn't able to get enough um, medical experience, internship to go to med school. And then I show him a picture in our office and then he sends me a picture of him in his lab coat. I'm like, geez, you know, that's one that if you talk longer, you get more emotional about it, but incredibly proud of guys and what they do afterwards, right? One thing that just, um, for me, represents like the experiences um, and as you know, as being the higher former players that you have on staff. Yeah. And so, um, you know, luckily for me, I have four, and that to me, they, they understand how important the things are that we do, yeah. um, and they take great you know, pride in that. So, again, the weddings, all those things, and then seeing them with their degrees um, be so successful in the things they're doing. Last question. If you could change or add any good, cool. <laughs> what would it be and why? Are you going like something that actually will happen or something that won't? Uh, I'd say, I always say I think there should be like, um, and this is never going to happen, but I love for any type of hustle play. Like I, I always say that to the yeah. team, wouldn't it be great if you got like two points for like diving on a loose ball and you come up with it? So I think that would be like such a, like a neat like thing to add. If that's the case, Hannah Naiho might be your all-time leading scorer exactly, in school history. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I said she certainly, uh, certainly did that. I think I changed, I actually, um, what I change in ours, and which is different because you guys still have it, is the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we yeah. have automatic two shots for all the fouls now. After five. Right? And I just think it's rewarding the player for missing a foul shot. But again, that's something that I played with. It got changed. I'd like to see that get changed back yeah. to just the, the pure one-on-one -on -one again. You have to make one to get the next one. I, I think mine would be defensive too. I, I, I feel like um, there's two things that jump to mind for me. is When there's a jump ball and it's initiated by the defense, they should get it. I used to love the closely guarded, right, five seconds. If you could stay in front and slide in front of somebody and, and, and you got the ball. Uh, I know freedom of movement and the clock has changed, but I used to love that rule because I thought if you could sit down and slide and guard, you got reinforced. Now it's like, if you can sit down and slide and guard, you just get tired yep. and yep. someone's gonna drive to the bucket and then you, know, then you get into that circle that has seemed to grow every year. It's gotten bigger and bigger. And, those are good things to talk about, but I think the reality is we don't have any control over that, no, right? That's, um, they'll vote and the CAA gets a vote and the, and the Big East and the ACC and the Big 12 gets 10 votes, it feels like. <laughs> and whatever is said, they go with and then we just react, so. We do what we always do, we adjust. We make adjustments and I think find a way. The ability to adapt and adjust to the situation um, probably is what has made you successful and hopefully um, has allowed us to have success too. And, it's a good thing because I think it makes you a better coach when you can figure out things in different ways. Agree. All right.
Tonight's game is sponsored by United Bank of Philadelphia, a homegrown minority-owned bank that is so much more than banking. Proud partner of Drexel Athletics. Back here at the deck, time now for your halftime stats, brought to you by Drexel PT. Drexel University Physical Therapy is the solution to your nagging aches and pains and is located conveniently right here on Drexel's campus. Contact them at 215-571-4287 or PTAPPT at drexel.edu for an appointment. Not much you can say about the left side of that. 17 of 25, that's 68%. And 6 of 9 from deep. Hofstra just having their way offensively with the Dragons. Well, you say that Hofstra has had their way with the Drags Dragons. What adjustments do you make to, to sort of stymie that? Well, the Dragons have got to do a better ball, uh, excuse me, a better job on, like, there to the pick and roll, and as well as the, uh, the just the ball screens up front, like, up high. Couple times, Hofstra guys have gotten open for too easy a look for three, and they're too good at a shooting team. You heard Coach Allison say they gotta contest it better. Your halftime adjustments brought to you by Rothman Orthopedics, the official team physicians of your Dragons, the Phillies, and Eagles. They provide the region with unmatched orthopedic care. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back to the second half of action. The Dragons in a 10-point hole here. Let's see if they can dig their way out. This is Drexel basketball from the DAC on NBC Sports Plus from Learfield Sports. The Varsity Network is the home of Drexel Basketball's live audio broadcasts. Download the free app available for both Apple and Android and listen to your Dragons all season long in the palm of your hand. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW Local 98, is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the 23-24 Drexel men's basketball season. IBEW 98, powering your Dragons and Philadelphia. Rothman Orthopedics, the official team physician of your Dragons, the Phillies, and Eagles, provides the region with unmatched orthopedic care. At Independence Blue Cross, we know where you come from is a part of who you are. That's why we get to know our members and their communities, which are also our communities. For more than 85 years, we've lived here, volunteered here, and earned our spot as the number one health insurer in the region. We're your hometown partner for life, and we'll never stop looking out for you. As we wrap up halftime here at the deck, let's take a look at the standings in the CAA. We got a full slate of games going on here tonight. The uh, leaders in the conference, UNC Wilmington, they're up by a point on NC, UN, uh, North Carolina A&T at the half, 34-33. College of Charleston up by five on Northeastern. And then the team's in the log jam with Drexel. Uh, Delaware trailing Elon by seven at halftime. And then Towson is up a point at the half on William & Mary, 27-26, your score there. Yeah, what a jam-packed top of the league right there. And, and even right behind, there's three other teams at 6-6. Six and six. So, seedings are going to be determined. Down to the minute. Yeah, we probably won't know a whole lot until we hit March. And we have a game in March before the tournament. We do. That's what I was saying. The last game of the season here against Northeastern on the second. So Drexel with the basketball first, lead off the second half. The same group that started the game on the floor again for Drexel. Moore, 13 on the clock. Finds Lucas Monroe. Somehow squeezed it in there. Somehow he was able to see past the trees, the forest that was, had him blocked in. Dragons need to start putting together some bricks. And as you can hear Calvin in the background, you start playing some defense against these guys. He shot the ball so well in the first half. And Plotnikov driving to the hoop. Say he's made a real difference this year. Monroe mid-range, that's good. So Monroe now at six. Dragons trail by eight again. Really weren't able to get much closer than seven after 
Hofstra opened up that lead midway through the first half. Just tuned in, it was 19-7 early. The Dragons cut it to four, but then Hofstra extended and has been fairly comfortable. I mean, Hofstra had two dry spells of their own in the first half, but Dragons unable to capitalize on those. Carlos has it knocked out of his hands by Moore. Justin to Ocruz. They'll have to set up the offense. Amar using his strength to get in there, and... That's what you like to see right there. Chance for one more. And he finished through the contact. It's good to see. Thomas picked up the reach. Number two on Thomas. Number one on the pride here in the second half. Amari four for four at the line tonight. It's just a five point game. Let's see if the Dragons are able to continue pressing. Trying to create a little havoc in the backcourt there. Fritz to Carlos, Jaquan, not good. He can shoot it out there. Just targeting computer wasn't working on that one. Monroe driving, scooping, shooting, scoring. Monroe at six early second half points and the Dragons are just down by three. Somehow after that first half, the Dragons have cut it to three, made it a game. Timeout Hofstra. Speedy Claxton wants to talk it over as his team seeing their lead evaporate here in the second half. What was a 10 point halftime lead is now just a three point advantage. We got a timeout on the floor. Lucas Monroe doing a lot of the heavy lifting here in the second half. You're watching Drexel basketball from the deck from Learfield Sports. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Woo, parking is free! Hey, it's free! Park With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> in the world of athletes, where every move counts, setbacks can feel like a mountain to climb. At Rothman Orthopedics, our team of top-notch orthopedic experts are here to get you back to doing what you love because we specialize in you. We're not just about recovery, we're about rewriting your story. With specialized physicians and unwavering support, we help you rise above adversity. Rothman Orthopedics, the official orthopedic provider of athletes. What you doing? Honestly, I don't know. I just want a good one. That's the thing about Giant. They're all good ones. Our produce team checks and double checks all day to make sure. And then we're trained to pick the freshest for you. Fresh training? Mm -hmm. Well, that makes way more sense than this. Next time, we'll pick for you. Then you pick up. Deal. Save this week. Strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries. Buy two, get one free. At Independence Blue Cross, we know where you come from is a part of who you are. That's why we get to know our members and their communities, which are also our communities. For more than 85 years, we've lived here, volunteered here, and earned our spot as the number one health insurer in the region. We're your hometown partner for life, and we'll never stop looking out for you. Discover The Study, a sophisticated yet relaxing hotel located at the heart of University City. Learn more at The Study at UniversityCity.com. <laughs> 34th and Lancaster, the home of the DAC. Inside, Drexel has cut the lead to three. It's like night and day, Rob. At halftime, it was only a 10 point lead, but you could feel the energy in the building wasn't where we like it to be. And understandably so, right? But boy, the second half, Lucas Monroe has brought the energy himself. 
and has kind of livened up the place. We have a lot of student athletes here tonight as uh, we have academic awards went on at halftime and a little fired up right now. It's a one possession game. Watching Tyler Thomas in the first half is disheartening. I can understand that. They try to get inside and they're going to call House, I mean Okrus on the, on the reach. It'll be 2 1. Okrus, no shots, just ball underneath the basket. So the Dragons start off making all four of their shots in the second half. Big change from the first half where it was all Hofstra early. Ooh, a tough play right there, and Hofstra with an easy deuce. You don't want to get Dubar started. He was one of the few guys that was quiet in the first half. Lucas, Lucas Monroe, Monroe just continues his hot shooting ways. Like, just give me the ball, right? Wow. What a spark the second half Monroe has had. He's four of four himself this half. Thomas steps to the three-point arc. The shot is short. And Moore wow, steps on the end line as he tries to save it. That's a missed opportunity because the Dragons did a really nice job making Thomas. They really forced Thomas to make a tough shot there. Just couldn't come up with that rebound. Mari Williams checks out and Garfield Turner checks in for the Drexel Dragons. Give Amari a little break before the under 16. Thomas gets a little closer, and he is fouled. Foul's going to be on Lucas Monroe. So he's in the act of shooting, so. Tyler Thomas going to the line. He's an 83% free throw shooter, making his first trip today. So far today, he's 8 of 13 from the floor and 2 of 5 from deep. And he's got five assists as well. That's a high percentage of their points he's had a part in. He's wearing interesting shoes in that they have very little, first one goes down, very little lift on the bottom, very little sole. It's almost like he's wearing barefoot shoes. They almost look like track spikes from here. Yeah, they are really flat on the bottom, aren't they? Splits the trip. Dragons down four. Okrus. And they're, they're going to get, uh, looks like Plotnikov. Plotnikov and Turner, they haven't covered each other a ton in this game, but every time they do, it's really physical, and that's why they have five combined fouls. Plotnikov with three of them. Okrus runs the line, turns, fires. Couldn't connect. Had an open look. Just missed. Job by Lucas Monroda. Cut him off and he keeps poking the ball out there. Really making Thomas work. Laquan gets it into Fritz. Fritz likes to do this, go right to the bucket. Oh. He created all kinds of contact yeah. and they're gonna call GT for a foul. That's his third. GT a little bummed out about that call. We got a timeout on the floor before the free throws. Dragons down four. This is Drexel Basketball from Learfield Sports.
Sheridan University City, located blocks from campus, is a preferred hotel and proud partner of Drexel Athletics. Here at the deck, it's a four-point game between the Hofstra Pride and the Drexel Dragons. The Pride in front of Drexel currently. Both teams equal 15 and 10 overall records, equal league records at eight and four. And as we get back to action, Yako Fritz will be at the line shooting two. Fritz today has got six points on three of three shooting. He is 0 for 1 at the line so far. The 51.2% free throw shooter. These teams are going to be back at it again next week. Crazy, right? You don't play until mid-February now. You get Hofstra. Is it two out of three games? Two out of three games. You get Campbell here on Saturday, and then on Thursday we'll be up at Hempstead, Long Island, New York. As Fritz knocks one down. Now that's one of your favorite trips. Absolutely. I used to go to Hofstra played football back in the day. And so used to, when I was in TAL, they used to try to have us all come out and go to the games. So I spent some time on the Hofstra campus. Some of my good friends went to Hofstra. You know, get a chance to sneak out to the wood possibly. See my man Johnny X. Moore to Turner. Now in the corner, Okruz's shot is blocked by Thomas. That's his second block. Blocks it right into the hands of Robert Battle. That, that? Win, that winter jacket that Battle has on makes him look massive. He's a big dude well, he, to begin he's with. Big. <laughs> but Man, Thomas is just doing a little bit of everything tonight. So Monroe will throw it in. Got to go the long way to Moore. 14 on the clock. Justin from deep. Good. That's a three-point bucket. Got a three-point game. One possession again. Crazy after that start. You find Tyler Thomas cutting along the baseline. He misses the, the chippy right there. Wow, of all the shots he hasn't missed tonight. Probably one of the easier ones. Kobe McGee. And Justin telling the guys to simmer down. Moore finds Turner. Oh, nice play. Nice find, and Turner able to sneak in the middle there. Couldn't finish, but there's a foul. So Dubar is going to get his first. Turner heading to the line. His first time today. GT 66.7%, 32 of 48 before today. Short there. And Silas Sunday checking into the game, taking the place of Yako Fritz. Sunday, a seven foot Iona transfer. Had five points in the game last year between Drexel and Hofstra. Sneaks it in. So now Bergen's going to come onto the floor. He'll take Lucas Monroe's place. Yeah, Monroe had a really nice start to this second half. Kind of got the Dragons back in this almost by himself. The Dragons needed somebody to step up, and Monroe was the guy. A two-point game. Thomas whips it across to Carlos. Now to the other corner, D-Stone. 13 on the shot clock. Thomas along the baseline to D-Stone. Dubar into the paint. Spins. GT knocks it out of bounds. Yes. It'll continue to be Hofstra basketball. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Hard to tell. I couldn't see from this angle, but I actually thought Dubar had a three-pointer in the corner that was open, but he decided to drive instead. Spin. He's that's, fouled. That's a good call. Bergen's reached in and got him before. You, you said that with such, uh, that's a good call. Like, well, because Turner did a nice job playing defense there, but Jamie just kind of reached in and got a piece of him. Coach Spiker checking to make sure it's not the fourth foul on Garfield Turner. 
And Dubar, 72% free throw shooter. Oh, won't fall down for him. Looked like it would, but it decided not. That one is good. Hofstra's picking up full. Trying to surprise Drexel right here. But they back off a little. I don't think everybody was on the same page. No. But you can see Dubar definitely wanted to face guard somebody. I said I'm face guarding somebody. The handoff to Moore. He finds Bergens at the three. Six on the shot clock. He goes up. Kiss it off the glass, but no good. But Jamie Bergen's going to go to the line and shoot two. It's fouled by Khalil Farmer. Glad the Dragons were able to get to the line. I don't think Bergen saw it, but Kobe McGee snuck up on the wing and was wide open. And I think this place would have gone nuts if they could have tied it up on that shot. Oh. Instead, Bergen's will go to the line and try to trim the lead. Bergen's has eight now. Get ready for the Jersey Mike CA Men's Basketball Championship coming up March 8th through the 12th. Tickets available online at casports.com backslash MVV. Wouldn't be surprised to see these two teams playing each other down there at one point, whether it's 4-5, 3-6, who knows. Could be three times in the course of three weeks. <laughs> I don't know if either coach and staff would like that. Not sure how I'd feel about that, but we will find out. Today and next Thursday, D-Stone trying to muscle his way in. Now he shoots it blocked by House. Another, House, another block. He's got, he's got a few this year. And Dragons have a chance to take the lead. They have not led today. Justin Moore gives him the lead. That is unbelievable. Can't keep a good team down. Wow. Now, can you keep the lead, right? Can you, get, can you stop them here? Getting to the top of the mountain is hard, but staying there, even harder. And then look who they give it to. Thomas bumped on his way in. Now, let's see. Can't tell who they call that on, but I'm guessing it's on Turner. You are, you are correct. Number four on GT. So just so. like that, Garfield will have to go to the bench, and Thomas will return to the line. Amari at the table to check in. Coach Spiker's already made his move. Thomas continues. He now has 20 points in this game. Considering that he had 18 first half points, that's it's a blessing that he's just got to 20. House goes out. Lucas Monroe in, so McGee, Monroe, Bergens, Williams, and Moore are the five for Drexel. On the other side, Dubar, Farmer, Carlos, Thomas, and Sunday. So the Dragons had the lead for all about 17, 18 seconds. Let's see if they can get it back here. Kobe fades. No good. Amari with a rebound. Kicks it out to Kobe at the top. Bergens for three. No good, but Bergens gets his own rebound, and the putback is good. Yeah, Bergens knew that shot was off by so much that he just charged in, got his own offensive board. All the hustle in the world, and now we're on the seesaw as the Dragons have taken the lead again. This could turn into one of those Drexel Hofstra classics. Carlos fakes, blocked by Amari Williams. They're going to say it's a goaltending. So they can review that, and they will. They will at the next time out. But for now, it's a goaltending. Yep. So Jaquan Carlos gets a bucket there. He's got six in this game. So he's got four in this game. Now, if the Dragons can score here, they'll go to review, and I don't think that was a goaltend. It'd be like a little four-point play. And from this angle, it did not look like it was a goaltend. 
They do have a tendency to stick with the original call as we're getting low on the shot clock. And now the Dragons throw it away. Unforced turnover will take us to the under 16 timeout. Hofstra finds itself in a dogfight after cruising in the first half. They have a one point lead over the Drexel Dragons. Maybe not. They're going to go take a look at that goaltending call. This is Drexel basketball. Drexel and Hofstra from Learfield Sports. To truly help those around us, we must advance technology to meet society's biggest challenges. Researchers at Drexel University's College of Engineering have discovered solutions on the nanoscale with Maxines. Now studied by tens of thousands of researchers from more than 100 countries around the world, Maxines are a family of nanomaterials poised to become the next building block of technology and solve today's most complex issues. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships. I think being part of the team, behind the team, knowing that there's multiple individuals that are all really focused on the same goal of keeping athletes healthy, really does make an impact in their lives. My goal is always the same, meet the athlete where they are, help them be their best selves, but also minimize their risk. When I think of the team behind the team, I really kind of consider an army in the background, right? Uh, we're kind of an unseen group of people that the end result is really the athletes on the field, on the court, performing. The madness of March comes to our nation's capital as the 2024 Jersey Mike CAA Men's Basketball Championship is back at the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C., March 8th through the 12th. Get ready for big shots, end-to-end -end action, and exciting finishes as 14 teams battle for a berth to the NCAA tournament. Get your tickets now at caasports.com slash MBB to see which CAA team will be crowned in the capital. Drexel University Physical Therapy is the solution to your nagging aches and pains and is located conveniently on Drexel's campus. For an appointment, please scan the QR code on your screen. Welcome back here to Philadelphia. Dragons down by one, but great contributions from the bench. We saw Kobe McGee early on in the game. But how about Jamie Bergens? 11 points, a team high off the bench. What a hustle play on that last play by Bergens to give the Dragons the lead for the moment. And Bergens didn't put up double-digit points at all in two years at Oral Roberts. He's had two games of double-digit points in the last three for Drexel. Guys? Bergens a really big piece off the bench for Zach Spiker and the Dragons. But Hofstra's got the basketball and the lead right now, 54-53. As hot shooting as the Hofstra pride were, in some ways the Dragons got to feel lucky to be in this one as Carlos pulls up from the elbow, no good. And Bergens with the rebound. Justin Moore looking for a way to get it inside. They get it to Amari, turns, goes to the left. Yep, that's where he's most effective when he goes to the left right away. And Drexel back up on top. Now we still have 11 minutes left. <laughs> this game is just uh, tires you out. You're back and forth. Rebounded there by Sunday. Yeah, went a little long. Amari had pretty good position. Jaquan Carlos for three. For three. Hofstra up two. They find Monroe once again. They are having a really hard time staying with Lucas Monroe. The Penn grad putting on a little bit of a show here today. Only played about three and a half minutes in the first half. But this half he's come out. Tyler from the CAA logo. Yeah, he got way too, he got free way too easy. 
He's got 23 now. By the way, I don't know if we mentioned it, but the goaltending stands. They reviewed it during the timeout, and they said that Amari got there late. The ball had already touched the glass, and he sort of double-tapped it off the glass. So in case you were wondering, they did look at it. I know you weren't wondering, too. No, I didn't remember to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas up top for Carlos. Seven on the shot clock. Justin Moore's got to stay with him here. The shot is away from Bryce Washington. No good. Justin does not have numbers right here, so he slows it up. Amari's pass is stolen. Dubar ahead to Thomas. Thomas had to adjust for that one. And they're lucky to still have the basketball. Laquan will bring it back to the top, 59-57. Eight on the shot clock. Carlos with a long two, it rims out. That rattled around like it was gonna go down. Justin pulling up. Oh! Looked like he had the touch, but didn't get the shooter's roll. Points all of a sudden getting a little harder to come by. Had a stretch where everyone was making shots, and now defense is picking it up. Thomas. Wow. Okrus is right with him right there. You know, it's amazing the, the run of scores that Hofstra has had over the year. I mean, starting with their head coach, Speedy Claxton, who scored over 2,000 points. They've, they've always have a dude who can get buckets. I feel like they always have a 2,000 point guy, not a 1,000 point guy. 2, yeah, 000. a 2,000 point guy. Justin Moore from the elbow, that's good. Yeah, it goes way back. Remember, we had Lauren Stokes, there was a Agudio. Probably Jenkins. the best of them all is Jenkins. And they just keep coming. And then we're not even talking about Estrada, who's a player of the year in the CA. <laughs> uh, yeah, they just, they get guards, don't they? And they, they like to recruit in Brooklyn. And there's a couple guards in Brooklyn. Thomas Floater. <laughs> and Thomas is just, he's, he's cooking dudes right now. Good pass inside by Moreau. Okru shot. They're going to call that a goaltender or a foul? And they got a technical over here on, it looks like they're going to call Dubar for a technical for. For showing his displeasure. Yeah. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll sort it out when we get back. The Dragons down five. This is Drexel Basketball from Learfield Sports. to truly help those around us.
Sign and Design, proud partner and preferred signage supplier of Drexel Athletics. Back here at the deck and on the way out to the break, Tyler Thomas picked up a technical foul. There was a goaltending call there. Thomas spikes the basketball. So I'm not sure if you're able to ear hustle that, but they checked out a three on the Hofstra end. It'll stay a three. Then on the other end, uh, the goaltending call will stand as once again, ball hit the glass first and then was double tapped off the glass. And then you got to see as we were coming back from break, Tyler Thomas bouncing the ball up over his head in frustration. And for that, they gave him a technical. So that will also count, add to his personal foul count. Yeah, I thought that was Dubar, but Dubar had the ball after he bounced it up there. Um, and you could see in the replay, like he really, like if he had caught that, it wouldn't have been anything. But it went up in the air, and that's almost an automatic. So, it, so, it, so it's a technical. So we're going to have some shots. Wow, crazy, crazy it's little a, run a, here. A very crazy little run here. But while we have a moment, some good news in the Drexel family. Yeah, we have a new dragon in the family. I doubt they're watching tonight. I'm hoping they're sleeping. But uh, Greg and Jordan Cusick, Greg's the senior associate AD here. They had a child the other day, Walker, so it's the newest dragon, just, just under a week old, so congrats. It tragically reminds me of um, Talladega Knights. Okus shooting the technical free throw. Well, that is and not easy having a child in the middle of basketball season. No. I've done that before. That's. And didn't you have to peel out of Williamsburg one time? Yes. To, to <laughs> hightail it out of Williamsburg yeah, to get home? My wife, yeah. My wife uh, went into labor when I was actually eating eating lunch with Calvin Hicks and Bruce Flint, and I had to drive all the way home. Yeah. Luckily, Greg didn't have to do that. I'm sure Calvin enjoyed the rest of your wings. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> One point game, 64-63, Hofstra in front. Bergens. That's a big technical foul. It turned into a four-point play. Dragons really needed there when it was, they were down five. Nine seconds on the shot clock. That's Thomas with the ball. Tyler fading out of bounds. Misses the shot. The Dragons able to get the rebound. More. McGee sets his feet. It's good. The Dragons take the lead. 66-64. That's Kobe's third three of the night and perfect time. A nice job by Justin Moore. Letting everybody go by, not trying to find Amari in a tough pass. Easy one out there to McGee, shooting in rhythm. And Amari Williams playing really good defense last time on Thomas, really making him have a tough shot. I'm going to say it's on the floor. Yep, Lucas Monroe with the hold. There we go, number two, puts up the number two. So GT checks in and... Amari goes out. Coach Spiker moving his chess pieces around. Yeah, getting Amari some rest before the stretch run, I'm guessing. Thomas takes the inbounds pass. Too strong. Don't see that much. The Dragons an opportunity to extend their lead. Shot's just short, and it's going to stay here. The foul is actually on the other side. I Calling Jaco Fritz for the yeah, foul. Yeah, I'm looking over at, you know, you, um, you have Carlos on the floor over there. Fritz side Dubar, but the foul is on the other side. Fritz protesting. The ref thought that he uh, grabbed. Six fouls on each team now, so no shots. Well, there'll be shots on the next foul each way. Monroe looking to get it up top for GT. Dragons want a good possession here up to try to make this a two possession lead for the first time all night. Monroe's shot is blocked. They're going to call a foul. So D Stone Dubar will get the foul. Hmm. Lucas Monroe going to go to the line to try and add to his 12 points. Looks like a pretty clean block from here. Couldn't see down low if it was on the body. 
The man they call Unk, Lucas Monroe, lefty shot, good. Grad student from Penn. I wonder if he and Washington had lunch today. Former teammates at Penn. Yep. I was actually talking to Hofstra's SID today, and he was trying to tell me what a great guy their Penn grad student is. I was like, you don't know ours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything's a competition. So nice. Drexel up four. Well, anyone that knows Lucas Monroe knows like, what a great addition he is to the program. And what a great kid. They're going to get Bergens. So he's got some shots coming, as we said. One and one on the way. It's going to be Jaco Fritz. Fritz today, two of three at the line. He's got eight points so far. His shoes look more like track shoes, too. Jaco Fritz's first free throw is good, so he'll get a second. Got to get this crowd to make a little bit more noise here as Fritz knocks down two of them. Back to a two-point lead. Approaching the five minute mark. Ten on the shot clock. Justin finds Kobe. He loses the ball. Bergens runs it down. Shot clock's running out. He's going to have to shoot it from the fire. It's good! Whoa. From the dragon's breath, he fires up a three. I'd say just like they drew it up, but that wouldn't be accurate. That would not. <laughs> That was Even really Coach Spike would protest that one. That was Dom Mejia range right there. That was. Let's see if they can get a stop right here. And, at and they do. They do. Thomas probably a little more open than they would have liked. But that being said, the Dragons have a five-point lead and the ball with 4.20 to go. I didn't think I'd say that. Hoster's but gone. Over three minutes now without a bucket. Dragons still need to score, though. There's plenty of time left. But now Seven we're on the shot clock. Bergens again has it. Is the clock turning down? He drives. It's blocked. And a shot clock violation this time. And that will take us to the under four timeout. So Jamie Bergens, three of his, 14, of, of his 14 points here today. Dragons have the lead. This is Drexel Basketball from Learfield Sports.
Tonight's game is sponsored by United Bank of Philadelphia, a homegrown minority-owned bank that is so much more than banking. Proud partner of Drexel Athletics. Back here in Philadelphia, it didn't seem like it was going to end this way, but we got our surreal barn burner here. It's Drexel up on Hofstra, 71-66. They were down 10 at the half. Yeah, Dragons got to keep the pressure on, though, because as we've mentioned, like, the pride leads the league in three-point percentage. So five points, that's two possessions, right? You got to score. That can happen in a hurry. And they have so many guys that can do it, but the Dragons just got to play good, take care of the basketball. They play well, I should say. Um, take care of the basketball and continue to play the tough defense that they your have been. The your English teachers possessions. will appreciate the correction. Carlos. Juan backs out. Thomas wants it. McGee doing a good job of denying him. Here he goes. Somehow he finds a man underneath. It's Bryce Washington. And Again, I think they're going to get Lucas, Lucas Monroe for yeah. the foul. I think he got him on the elbow. That's some pen-on-pen -pen crime right there. <laughs> so we're going to have a... They're going to call that a shooting foul, on the, or are they going to give him a one-on-one? -on -one? Let's see. Two. Shooting two. Going to the line. See Bryce Thomas, Washington. See when Thomas two. cut to the baseline, Rob. It seemed like the entire Drexel bench went over and covered. There were like <laughs> three guys there with their, all the, the guys with length and just trying to drape them in there. Bryce Washington will go out. German Plotnikov will come back in. Dragons up four with the basketball. Three minutes, 18 seconds remaining here. They've got to move the ball a little more than they did last possession. See what they can do with it here. Bergen's trapped on the baseline. He finds GT. Ah, I don't know how he found him there. It looked like he was not just trapped, but it looked like that could have been a turnover, but a really nice find by mm -hmm. Bergen. I'm going to assume that somewhere in that the ball's flight, it was out of bounds on that pass. Bergen's having a really nice game off the bench. The hand off to Thomas. He turns and fires, misses. Hey, tough two, right? You'll, you'll take that from the defensive end, and for him to miss... Again, still too early to kill that clock. But the Dragons aren't looking to move it around. Amari Williams at the table to check in. The next stop at your play. Yeah, 10 on the clock. I guess they do, they do want to kill the clock. Got to go, though. Se six seconds. You don't want a bad shot here. And Justin's going to have to force one up. Shot is blocked. So that right there is a bad possession. Yeah. I agree with you. Amari that, in and GT out. That's two like violations really that they've gotten killing the clock. Now it's killed a minute, but again, like it, this is Hofstra. You know, you're not playing against a team that can't score, so yeah, six points is easy, and it can be fast. Let's see if Hofstra gets some urgency to their offensive tempo. Ooh, Yako Fritz. Yeah, the Amari knocked that down and went up off of Fritz. So I think Amari might get a steal on that. But either way, more important, the Dragons have the, Dragons the, ball have the basketball. I like it how they have Bergens bring the ball up and more on the offside, and then he comes and gets it. Just seems like it moves a little, a little better. Amari looking to pass. The three-point arc. The handoff to McGee. Back to Amari Williams. Quickly puts it up and good. We haven't seen that out of Amari much this year. A little short lefty jumper, and the lead is eight with a buck 36 to go. Dubar for three. And Speedy Claxton takes a quick timeout. Well, like I said, they score quick. They Dubar. can score quick. 
Dubar up to nine today. He's been kind of held in check. It's been mostly the Thomas show. So with 1.20 to go, the Dragons with a five point lead. Drexel, such a better second half. Shooting 62% from the floor. And uh, really taking care of the ball much better this half. You know, in the first half, Rob, the, uh, the Dragons had five turnovers. They've only had two this half. And both of them have been dead ball turnovers, which is... If, if you're, you're going to turn have it one, over, that's the way to do it. Yeah. So we'll see what Dragons come up with. Luke House will come into the game. Luke's been pretty quiet today. He's got five points. Balanced it, scoring attack for Drexel, though, Rob. Lucas Monroe, Jamie Bergens, and Amari Williams, each with 14 points. Wow. Very balanced. Kobe Meagie with a nice game off the bench. He's had nine points. On the other side, as we said, it's Thomas. 28 points, six boards, six assists. 18 in the first half. But he is up to 21 shots now. I mean, because early on, he, he wasn't really He missing. wasn't missing. But the Dragons have made him work hard here in the second yeah. half for his buckets. Drex will be right back here Saturday. Campbell coming into town. First Cam trip ever. Cam the Camels will be making their first appearance here. The Camels right now are down seven at Monmouth. 80-73 is the score there. About two and a half to go. Yeah, the newest member of the CAA. Luckily, we didn't have to make that trip this year. Probably will next year. To Bowie's Creek. That's a long one. You can, it just sounds like a long trip. Sounds here, like we're going to have to fish while we're down there. Here, it's a nice campus, but you know, if we don't have to see it this year. It's okay. The house gets it inbound to Williams, and he's fouled immediately by Jaquan Carlos. Yeah, it's one and one. So they're going to make the Dragons beat him at the line. A little early, but not a terrible strategy. Dragons make one here. It's just a two-possession game. Well, you know, so. if they watch the tape from last year, Amari is 50% at the line, 5 of 10. So they'll take their chance. He's been 4-4 today. Hopefully Amari just at least knocks down the first one, makes this a six-point game. But we'll see, because that didn't take any time. Like, really, it took two seconds off the clock. And like I said, you know Hoster wants to go, so they can got to take advantage of these one and ones See if Amari can do that right now. Misses, and Hofstra gets the rebound. Thomas catches, fires, and draws the foul. That's, I know they, they call that all the time, but boy, he just initiated all that. Justin Moore wasn't even trying to block and He the threw shot. his body. So what a swing. The Dragons miss a one and one. Now you have one of the top players in the league going for three freebies. And he's already got 28 tonight. He said earlier, an 83% free throw shooter. Three of four today. Make it four of five. It's never easy in the league. He knocks down the second. But boy, what a swing. So right now, you missed that one and one, right? Giving away possibly two points, and right now he's three the other way. So five points swing, the lead will be two if Thomas makes this. And he does. We didn't mention it earlier, but I'll throw it in quickly. The Dragons are over 70, so with your ticket tomorrow and a dollar purchase, Shake Shack Burger, one of the three area Shake Shacks. Free lunch for you tomorrow, too. One minute remaining. Dragons up two. House makes the turn, misses the shot, but Amari Williams is there to clean it up, and they're going to call an offensive foul. On who? Who could? There was, there was I, no I, contact. I, the, the Drexel coaches are asking the same question you are right now. They're calling it on Luke House. How can he call an offensive foul from out here when there's two referees underneath? Like, I, I don't mean to get on the rest, but, like, he went by him. There's two referees right there, and this dude calls it from midcourt take a look there they're going to say that not he, he nicked number there, 11 there, there was definitely a bump but like Fritz you got that referee we can see him right there he didn't call anything wow and we got a timeout on the floor and let's watch this too here he comes in he's 
he, he was definitely outside of the clearance circle. My question is, look how late this call is. You can see the referee in the upper left-hand corner there. There's two right here looking at it. He's, he's halfway down the court. Uh, Am I wrong? Uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but unfortunately, I guess I am stand. wrong because well, he called it. On he him. called it. You know, unfortunately, we we have a voice, we have a microphone, but we don't have the authority. Wow. And Drexel coaches still. Are they taking a look at it? I don't know why they would. I mean, I. He was he wasn't in the circle, but I don't think you can check. I think you can only check to see if he's in the circle, right? You can't you can't check if it's a bad call. Oh, they're over at the table now taking a look. I don't even know if he was totally it's, set either. It's, it's weird. Like this crowd never really got into the game, like because it they were tra we're trailing for so long, traveling trailing for the first 28 minutes of the game, 20. 30 minutes of the game, and then it's been so tight. Yeah, and then right there it was about to, because Amari Williams got the rebound. It, you know, if, if the play had stood, he would have got the rebound, and he got, we thought he got fouled. thought that's what the whistle was for. So that's an and one, so now you're going to be up four with a shot with 54. Instead, Hofstra has the ball down just two. Crazy turn of events. Rob Battle in the house with his family. So it'll be Hofstra basketball. If the ref was going to come over and explain it, I just nodded my head because I... You don't want to hear it? I, I don't... You don't want to engage? <laughs> There's nothing I can possibly say that's good. <laughs> if you get a technical uh. from here... So D-Stone Dubar to throw it in. That, bar, running many, out of time. That was a long time. They usually give him the benefit of the doubt on that, and that was pretty close. Wow, what a difference, though, right? The Dragons now have to make a stop here, or it's at least tied. Fritz blocked by Amari Williams. And they get the stop. And now Bergens is fouled, so he'll walk the floor. What a big block. It's funny, Rob, like, wow, look at that block. But when we, you talk about Amari Williams, right, uh, leads the league in blocks, but his blocks are way down this year. And a lot of that reason is because people don't go in. You know, he still has that. He's that, got the reputation now. The fear factor. But right there, what a big time to get his first in the day. Two-time defensive player of the year in the league. So we get another one-on-one. This one with 35 seconds to go. Bergen's 14 points in the day. Two for two at the two for two at the line today. Three for three. He knocks down the next one. It becomes a two possession game. Create a little bit of space, a little breathing room. Bergens. Yeah, big one here for Bergens. So two possessions now with 35 and 410 seconds remaining. Oh, the Dragons with really good defense there, Rob. Jamie Bergen's taking away the outlet pass to Carlos. Monroe on the ball, and Hofstra has to call a timeout. Yeah, the rest of the Hofstra team was down at the other end of the court. Like, nobody came to help. Yeah, that was really, that was a nice little piece of defense right there by the Dragons, and, and Hofstra just not being aware of that. So... It's just a timeout. It doesn't give you anything major, but there's one less timeout that Hofstra has. One, one they less need it opportunity. Down the they, they're done with timeouts. And the officials were conferring in the middle of the floor. I was going to say, is there something else going on? But it, it's, it's not happening. Wow, this is exactly the type of game uh, you, you thought it would be, you, right? You and I talked on the way and on my way up here today and what did you say this is gonna be one of those games where you really don't feel all that good afterwards like this yeah. is gonna be tight you're gonna feel sick the whole time <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really true like if you care about either one of these teams you're feeling it right now best friend of the fanatic Tom Burgoyne and his brother Steve both Drexel alums here enjoying the game 
Jaquan Carlos to bring the ball up for the Hofstra Pride. They're down four. Carlos runs through, kicks to the corner. Taking a lot of time, which is good for Drexel. Carlos wide open. Wide open. Misses the shot. Rebound, but a foul. Fritz. Yeah, I think Amari got him with the shoulder before he went up for the block. Let's see if. So with the clock stopped. Yeah, that's not necessarily good for the Dragons, but. Fritz will go to the line. He's shooting a 4-5 today. Well above his average coming in. Missed it. But he has two. He's got two. House in Monroe out for Drexel. One more for Fritz here. Gets that one. Now a three-point game. So the Dragons against some subs here. Let's see what happens. Okrus is going to come in. He's trying to get some of the ball handles. Amari goes out. So we've got Okrus, McGee, Bergens, House, and Moore. Moore. You can tell I couldn't see him, right? I was looking over there to try to figure out who that last guy was. Yeah, it happens but, a lot. It's easy this, to is, do. this is the team you'd think would be in, though, though. you got the ball handles. The guys are really good free throw shooters. Now i got to get the ball in, and they do. Okruz gets free immediately, and they foul him. He's the guy. He's 90% at the line. At one point this year, he made 30 in a row. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they were that. They sort of let him be the guy. Yeah, he didn't, ha he didn't have to really fight to make that. So Okruz shooting two here. The Dragons are now in the double bonus. One makes it a two-possession game. And there it goes. And the Dragons are up four now. Amari checks back in. Luke House goes out. Okruz oh. misses the second. Gets fell, the clock running. Off it. Thomas for three. Oh. Of course he knocks it down. It's a one-point game. Wow. So now by him making that, even if the Dragons hit two, he can make another three, or they can make another, another three, three and force and tie overtime. It up, yes. Wow. That, that Okrus missed. Like, it looked like he just left the line just a little early. And then Thomas just, Justin Moore tried, right? It was in his face, didn't foul. Thought Hofstra was out of timeouts. They're going to look at something. They're looking. At, they're taking a look at the monitor. They're going to check the clock, and it should be like 10.1. That well, 10.1 is when the ball went in. He he definitely well, I shouldn't say definitely, but it looked pretty pretty good that he, he 10 made 10.1 when it went in, and yeah, then, and then they, how long it take to to follow on the the inbounds. And it looks like nine seconds will stand up. Now the, official, the officials prying both teams out of their huddles. Coaches trying to milk every second out of it. You know, that works in Hofstra's favor as they didn't have the timeout. But Claxton able to get his troops together. Yep, so Justin Moore, two shots at the line here. Justin, seven points, three of eight shooting. Justin Whoa. knocks down <laughs> the first one, hit the front iron. Made you a little nervous there. Yeah, need Se this one. 76% free throw and, shooter. And you, you think, too, like, Spiker has one timeout left. You wonder if maybe he calls it right here, if Moore makes it, and then comes up with, hey, you know what? Don't let Thomas shoot it. We've got to follow him ahead of time. It's three points if they make this, right? It's three if they make it. You really don't want him to. You foul somebody before they can even shoot. I think so. Justin Moore misses. Now you can't. The door is open. Six seconds remaining in the room. Carlos. 
Jaquan tries to kick it out to the corner. Thomas, as the buzzer goes off, it misses. The Dragons survive the charge by the Hofstra Pride. They were down double digits in the first half. Went to the locker room, regrouped, and came out and defended their home court. The Drexel now 16 and 10 overall, 9 and 4 in the league. Meanwhile, the Hofstra Pride falls to 15 and 11 and 8 and 5. Delaware is also 8 and 5. They picked up a win tonight. I mean, they lost tonight, so they're now 8 and 5. College of Charleston's 10 and 3. And this is a this is a tough fought basketball game. The Hofstra Pride, very talented offensive team. And they came to ball here tonight, but the Dragons defense clamped down in the second half. Started making some shots and defend their home court. Continue their quest to be in the top four come CAA tournament time. What a game from the Drexel Dragons. Team going by and fist bumping the crowd. Take a look at the uh, the split box. Drexel Dragons tonight led by 16 points from Jamie Bergens. If we look at the standings, UNC Wilmington, the College of Charleston, up at the top. Drexel steps up, now 9-4. and four. So they find themselves knocking on the door. UNC Wilmington, they're now 10 and 3. Now, Ari Bluestein's down the end of the court with our star of the game, Jamie Bergens. Ari. Thanks, Rob. Jamie, you had two of the biggest plays in the game. You had a follow up after you missed the three, you got your own rebound, and then you had a big three from like half court with the shot clock winding down. Talk about those two plays and what you wanted to do to win this game. Right, we're trying to get, give out everything. Uh, I want to shout out my teammates and my coaches because I got hurt last year and they kept on believing me. So this all, all because of them, all them shots, all the hard work. I love this team, so we're going we're gonna to be great. After a couple of tough road losses, you get a win over a team that Drexel really hasn't defeated that often. How does that feel to get a win? I feel amazing. We'll be right back at a Saturday, though, so I feel great. Thank you. Congrats on the win. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Rob. On Saturday, it's the Campbell Camels making their first trip to the DAC. Campbell today played Monmouth, and Campbell's going to get the win on the road, 87-82. So Campbell in the middle of a little road streak. I want to thank our producer and director today, Josh Bellman and Gurleen Singh. For Ari Bluestein, Mike Tuberosa, I'm Rob Brooks. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Drexel gets the win after being down 10 at the half. This is Drexel Basketball from Learfield Sports. This has been an exclusive presentation from Learfield.